going back to black leather eyes now, Jason here. Um, so how's everybody? Hope everybody's keeping well. And uh, it's been a while since I made a wee video, so I got a wee bit of free time here. I thought I'd jump on and just show some stuff I've been listening to or whatever. So uh, take a wee break from watching too much fucking YouTube. Um, so I'm hoping to catch up on people's videos and stuff next couple of days over the weekend or whatever. So yeah. Um, just some stuff I've been listening to, mixed bag of stuff really, some punk, metal, um, 70s hard rock, stuff that I'm into, you know. Uh, Alright, so, first up, a uh, couple of these comps, picked these up a few years back, um, a couple of years ago I think they, these these came out, came out around about the same time I think. Um, this is Satan's Parties one, so this is uh, 16 slices of European early 70s proto metal madness. Um, has bonds on here like Message and uh, Rob and Pip. Uh, the New Lords are on this. Um, cool Feet, Big Bertha. Morning Dew, the last song, and this is the Morning Dew song. Um, here Comes the Rainbow, which is a is the, a really goofy song, but it's extremely dangerous because it's really catchy and it's stuck in your head. Um, there's, a, there's a song on here called uh, Dom Flame by Blast, which is a quite a popular um, single from the 70s because it's sort of proto everything, uh, proto metal, proto punk, proto death rock. Um, it's not the most amazing song in the world, but it's good to hear. Um, because it has a really raw sound from that time, you know. Um, after Shaver on this as well, but yeah, it's not a bad, not a bad we comp. Up and down, but few few misses on it, you know. And um, this one's a lot better. Back to Kalefire. So this is the occult side of seventies British underground hard rock. Um, some really good uh, tracks on this from singles and stuff from the the seventies, the mid seventies period. Um, all UK obviously and this this compilation is basically there was a compilation that came out called uh, Do What By Wilt which was a a good compilation this is basically this is basically the same thing same tracks are on um, but yeah Heatwaver on this Camelot um, Sodonicus um, War Love By Sue is a good track probably the most um, infamous or yeah song on this is Fuck You by Lucifer. There's a couple of bands called Lucifer from the 70s, but yeah, it's a bit of early sleazy uh, shock rock from the time um, with nice romantic lyrics, if you know the song. Um, I just want to fuck you, woman. That's basically the way it goes. Ah. Um, but yeah, some really good some really good tracks in this. Evil City, the song by Shadow is really good on this. So yeah. As I say, this is basically the Do What They Will compilation that came out. Um, all the same tracks on it. Uh, really cheap comps too, worth picking up, see them about if you're into that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe pull out a couple of 7 inch singles I haven't played in the web of like 70s heavy stuff. Um, like this Proud Fresh record, um, Blind. Um, the song Devil Flight on this is an absolute scorcher. Cracking 70s heavy rock song, uh, Proud Flesh. Uh, check it out if you haven't heard it. Uh, Devil Flight from the 70s hard rock. It's uh, cracking me tune. I picked this up as a blind buy, and yeah, it really hit the mark. Fucking superb. And uh, another one is the Astroth single, um, which has Lady of the Moon on it and Satan Asperitus. Uh, this is the Unseen Forces. One that came out, and uh, really, really brilliant track. There was a, there was talk of this actually being a. Uh, I think it came out in '72 or something like that. Maybe the mid '70s, uh, but there was talk at one point that this came out in the '60s, which it didn't. And then there was talk that it was actually a fake band, but apparently it came out in uh, the mid '70s. So yeah, Astro, really good. Something a spiritus. Giving this a rock as well. Um, this uh, Robert Salvage, the Adventures of Robert Salvage LP. I think this is the only album they put out. Um, look at this fiend here. Uh, 
but a rocket. Um, yes, it can be the baby. The open track on this. Um, Save Us from the Cyclops is a really good sort of heavy psych rock song as well. Um, yeah, good, good hard rock um, album from the 80s. Good to hear this again and uh, give it a roll. Sort of psychedelic moments. Um, just, just good solid hard rock. Really enjoy it. Robert Savage, the, Ven the Adventures of Robert Savage. Um, what else? Well, here's a classic that I haven't played in so long. Um, Growers of Mushrooms by Lee Found. Um, brilliant LP. I hadn't listened to this in absolute ages. This was big in the 90s, wasn't it? Um, first seen this in Rapper Cracker when I was when I was a youngster. I didn't hear this till the mid 90s. Um, my friend used to write to the guys that started Spiritual Baggers. Um, he was in contact with them. I think even before they even started the band. And they would send him like mixtapes of stuff and uh, of stuff they were listening to and some demos and stuff of what they were up to themselves. And um, but they sent the Leaf Hound record and tape and I got a copy it off him. Absolutely brilliant. Um, you never forget like free, uh, freelance fiend and, and stuff like that. The title track, Growers of Mushroom, brilliant as well. Um, the singer, Peter Francis, probably I was going to say he's more famous for Atomic Rooster and singing with Cactus and stuff at one point as well, but probably more famous now for this LP. Um, yeah, so Lee Found, Growers of Mushroom. Top record, really, really good. Um, Proto Metal, 70s hard rock. Kraken. Uh, Next one's another one from the 70s, which is, uh, I had to listen to an absolute donkeys either, and that's uh, Night Sun Morning. Uh, I think it's Bond's German under this kink. This originally came out in 71, 72. Uh, this is the second battle reissue that came out in 2001 when I picked it up. Uh, another Belder 70s heavy LP. Uh, stuff on this like uh, Living with the Dying is amazing. Plastic Shock on the opening track, superb. Got a bone of my own. Uh, some of this is really heavy. Uh, burning keyboards. Uh, just a brilliant slice of that. Uh, 70s heavy stuff from the time. Superb. Uh, Night Sun with Morning. Giving this a rock recently as well. Tiamat Clouds. My favourite Tiamat album. Um, bought this when it came out and absolutely loved it. I think I've talked about this before, this record. But yeah, In a Dream, Crest of Stars, um, Sleep and Beauty, Brilliant, Scapegoat, Undressed. Uh, yeah. I was getting massively into Doom when this came out, when this came out in 92 maybe. Yeah, 92 I think. And it just really appealed to me at the time. And as I said before with this record, uh, can anybody else hear Twisted Sister influence on this? Even the guitar sound? Superb, superb album. Um, yeah, always good to hear this, I really enjoy it. Uh, the one before this, The Astral Sleep. Um, I've heard it. And I was really looking forward to this coming out, and it didn't disappoint when it came out. Brilliant. Good to hear that again. Uh, Alright, so, what did I do with that? Here we go. Which is by Eric Young. Um, so, this is a very popular book, came out in the 80s. Bathory fans will know this. The illustrations in this, Joseph uh, A. Smith, are absolutely fantastic. Um, but, I mean, this is... Where are we? Let's see if we can find it here. So here's the the uh, where Bathory took the their goat that adorned the first Bathory LP and the. Um, they also were inspired by the lyrics for Those Who Died, which I think is at the end of this here. Yeah, the poem at the end of it, For Those Who Died. And uh, Cawthorn took some of, the, some of the lyrics to the same and the same title um, from that wee poem. But the, 
the illustrations this are amazing. I just thought I'd pull this out because I've been listening to Bathory obviously, so um where's uh look at this for absolutely gorgeous sexual union with the devil beautiful beautiful illustrations um, but yeah so Bathory been giving this a rattle and uh what a fantastic LP. So when this came out seven or something. Um, and weirdly, well people would find it weird that I can hang with this, okay, but you know, I'm not really interested in a lot of the black metal started coming out of Norway in the 90s or whatever, that whole big explosion. But this is a fucking beast of an album, isn't it? Uh, Massacre, One of the Dark Desires. Absolutely amazing. Call from the Graves, incredible. And um, Charts of Fire. And those coral bubbles and stuff with the ring and um, on 13 candles as well. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Of Doom, a, a track to the Bathory Hordes. But yeah, absolutely savage. Um, the way Corthorn was able to you know, create something so potent in his own little bubble. And look how big it's became, you know, because this is basically the sound of the what I suppose what people would call the second wave of black metal. Um, but yeah, really love hearing this again. Really good on this one. Um Bloodfire Death. The title track of this I absolutely absolutely love. You can hear a wee bit more of an epic mono war vibe coming in parts of it. Um, but Fang Day to Die, The Golden Walls of Heaven, Pace Till Death, Holocaust, For All Those Who Died, Desiree, Bloodfire Death. I really love the title track on this. Uh, superb album. Scott at No Solution was uh, saying in my community feed that this is his favourite uh, Bathory LP. I think Big Dave was saying that too. A um, couple of other people. I can completely understand why someone even uh, choose this as their favourite Bathory album. Absolutely fucking brilliant LP. Um, yeah, and somebody pointed out to me uh, Golden Walls of Heaven, the first line. Um, of each lyric lyric line spells out Satan <laughs> and uh, is it there's her eyes like uh, there's her eye it has the same sort of thing goes on and it, it, it's like what's it say every letter and when it's spelled when you read it down the way it spells like um, Christ the bastard son of heaven or something like that but yeah, Bathory. Um, what a creative, creative guy. Um, to say to create that on a bubble of his own and just it exploded, yeah. Superb. Really good to hear Bathory again, play them again. Um, maybe we're going to pull out this Deliverance, Evil Friendship. Um, I don't know why this is a drum machine on this. It sounds like it. Um, but this. It remained, Bathory reminded me of this because this is sort of, this is basically another studio band and uh, they seem to be going for the same sort of thing, you know. Um, thrashy, speed metal, uh, black metal. Uh, it's really, really good. No way out. Um, Lord Advice is good. Turn Me to Stone, Evil Friendship, the title track. But I have this and their, their first one, Devil's Meat, the one with the girl that has Devil's Meat across her forehead. Uh, but yeah, it's a fine album. I really enjoy it. It has that same sort of vibe. They're going for that same sort of thing that Bathory were going for, but not as uh, not as potent and vicious, you know. But it's really good. Venom, uh, the singles, eight eighty eighty six. Uh, I end up pulling this out a lot when I want to hear Venom because it just gives me that quick shot of Venom. Um, In League with Satan, Live Like an Angel, Bloodlust, Die Hard. Lady Lost, Seven Gates of Hell, yeah, Warhead. It gives you what you need from Venom, you know, when you just want that quick fix. And a really, really good comp. Really love it. And what else we got? Oh, here's this one from 68. High on Mount Rushmore. Uh, came out in Dot Records. And this has, um, there's a cover of Stone Free. Open up a cover of Stone Free. This is San Francisco Band. Uh, pretty good. Uh, solid. Psychedelic blues rock. Um, don't know what else more to say to you. It's just a, it's a good listen, good sound in LP, and I really enjoy it. I hadn't listened to this in a, in a very, very long time. So, yeah, 
High on Mount Rushmore. Good crack. The Ramones. Mondo's Arrow. Uh, 90s Ramones. Superb center shit. And uh, the job that ate my brain. This is the job that ate my brain. Poison Heart, one of the best uh, baby Ramones songs ever. Uh, what a superb song. They do the, the Doors cover on here as well. Um, Copies on Crack. Um, strength to Endure, Anxiety. Uh, I would say the, Ramon the Ramones have never put out an album that I think is absolute shit. I really love the Ramones. Joey Ramones, he's one of my favourite singers. And um, I don't know, there's just so much humanity in his voice. It, it's hard not to love the guy. Um, and his solo stuff is brilliant as well. But yeah, it'd be easily one of my favourite bands, the Ramones. And this is a good 90s, 90s record band. Age of Quarrel by um, Chromax. Um, who was it was talking about the Chromax? I was watching the, one of the, the streams on uh, Dave's channel, uh, Carbonous Carnage 213. Uh, I really enjoy those streams that, that he's doing with uh, Matt and uh, John at Rock and Metal Plus and stuff. Uh, but I think, I think maybe John was showing some Chromax stuff when they were talking about Thrash and Crossover records and I hadn't listened to this in ages and pulled it out and Hard Times is on this and uh, what else is on here? Malfunction. We got no the, the opener is absolutely fucking incredible. Um Life of My Own. This is just brilliant bod tempered hardcore heavy as fuck. Brilliant. Really really good. I like this in best wishes. But yeah it was good to spin this again. Age of Quarrel by Crew Mags. Uh, another belter, I think John was showing this in the same stream. Uh, Thought in the Vatican by Exhorter. And when I heard this when it first came out, it was shit. It was so good. And um, probably like a lot of people, I heard the, I heard them first on that, at their store compilation that had DSA and all on pestilence and sadists and stuff like that. Um, what was on that? Desecrator or something was it? So long now I can't remember. Um, but, yeah, what a fucking amazing heavy record. I really like the law as well when it came out. But, yeah. What else do you say about Slaughter and the Vanagon? It hasn't already been said a hundred fucking times. And it's just so good, so heavy. And uh, when I when I first got a copy of this LP, my friend bought it in record when it came out. I borrowed it, copied it on the cassette. And I, uh, when I was transferring it, I boosted the, the volume level on it. So the tape, the that I had when I would play at the weekends when we, where we used to hang out when we were younger in Belfast City Centre. My friend would turn up with a gala blaster and everybody would be waiting for him to come and have all their tapes ready. And uh, he would come loaded up with batteries in his pockets, you know, and his combats. And when I put the tape into that exhort, he just had to turn up slightly and the thing would burn. It was so heavy and so loud. It was fucking incredible. But yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant album. And the... They have a a new song at the minute. It's a bit weird. The original guitar pair and writers away. Kai Thomas is playing guitar and singing at the same time, so the song was alright. You know, it didn't really sound too much like Exhorter to me. It sounded like it could be a lot of different any band at the minute. Um, I don't know, maybe their sound's caught up with them now as well. Uh, but this this is a fucking cracker, the beast of an album. Uh, well, I'm going to turn this over. Yeah, this is what we're listening to, by the way. Uh, the Blood Off Span. I uh, could get a copy strike, copyright strike for this. Uh, I've listened to this in the way. Good, got some great brass rock on it. And, yeah, good grooves. Really enjoy it. Uh, what else we got? Alright, so. Amoebics. Uh, this is the Spider Legs recordings. They came out on uh, Alternative Tentacles. This came out in the late 90s or 2000 or something. Um, I'm not sure actually, but this is like the, the early recordings. No Sanctuary, um, Mini, and uh, a couple of the 7 inches they had out back then. And fucking amazing. Just dark and angular and fucking gr absolutely great sound. The song on here called Control. I absolutely love that track. Uh, it sounds like when the bass is playing, it sounds like somebody's just going like this with a fucking phase shifter. Fucking 
rennet sound and LP. And a suit, suitably haunting cover of uh, some dead Jews. And uh, yeah, frightening. Um, but superb band. I didn't get into Amoebix until way later. And um, when they got back together, I think I talked about that before. When the band got back together again, they were all over the press and it was like, I just, I ignored Amoebix for fucking all those years. And uh, so I started picking up some other stuff. This one's brilliant. Uh, yeah, Amoebix, New Sanctuary, the Spider Legs uh, recordings, Spider Leg recordings, Process Sanctuary, Put Back the Humans, uh, Winter, fucking amazing sound. And it's the great, great band. It's a really good record. Uh, the Cramps. Look, Mom, no head. This is fun. Absolutely fun as fuck rock and roll. Um, dames, booze, chains and boots. Two head of sacks and chains. Um, mini skirt blues. Alligator stomps. Amazing. Um, eyeball of my martini. You know what you're getting with the Cramps. Um, every Cramps album that I own is absolutely, absolutely fucking superb. I don't, don't own everything they ever done, but quite a few other LPs now, and this is the first one I ever heard. Absolutely amazing record, so yeah, I had fun blasting this again. Look, Mom, no head, better cramps. Truck. Uh, so this is Truck Tracks. I think this came out in 71. Great, great hard rock record. Um, and yeah, well, there's a song on here. If you don't know this album, check out if you're into it heavy rock from the 70s. Check out Winter's Coming On. What a fucking amazing, amazing tune. And uh, Truck, with Truck Tracks from the early 70s. Really good hard rock. And uh, I'm gonna leave it there, and I'll catch you all soon. So, um, yeah, hope you'll catch up with people's videos and whatever soon, and uh, over the weekend, most likely. And uh, I just wanna say hello, and so hello, and uh, goodbye, and see you later, woohoo!